Hey everybody, welcome to Clatter TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm not Sinead DeFreeze, my name is Josh Makuga. Sinead DeFreeze is a little bit late for today's episode, so I'll be filling in. In the meantime, she'll hopefully be back just in time to talk about, you know, Westworld, because we are going to talk at length about the penultimate episode of this week. Also, a lot of other things going on. We got the superhero stuff. We're going to tease a little superhero crossover stuff. Some Star Trek casting. I know David is super excited about that. Before we get going, uh, Sasha Poe Raver, how's it going? Oh, I thought you were going to like third person yourself and go, <laughs> Josh, who's here? Josh. And who else is here? <laughs> Sasha. And I can't wait to talk about Westworld because this was, there's, I went to bed last night. I couldn't stop thinking about it. You guys, I have a new tinfoil hat theory oh, that no. I will be sharing with you. Kind of like how I shared last night's episode with. David Griffin. Yeah, so I think a lot of the fans think that we watch all these shows together, and we really don't. Last night was the first time I actually sat down with Sasha and watched Westworld in a group, and it was fun. I got to get inside the mind of Sasha Pearl Raver as she's watching <laughs> Westworld, which was fascinating to see. I can't wait to dive into that episode. Uh, yeah, I was stuck in traffic coming down from Northern California, which was uh, fantastic. Thanks, Grapevine. Really uh, a lot of fun there. Everybody right knows by the you have to leave on either Saturday or Monday. Yeah. That that's was true. a rookie mistake, bro. It was. Rookie mistake. Yep. Can't ever do the Sunday drive. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. Uh, I could have used that information uh, prior to my drive there. Thanks, Listen, Sasha Pearl Raver. Seven get loose. We know these things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, David, this first story, this one's all for you. Uh, let me let me do a quick read through here. Uh, Nicholas Meyer, in an interview with ComingSoon.net, mm. writes for Star Trek, said that uh, they have cast the lovely Michelle Yeoh uh, from... Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> that photo is incredible. Uh, she's oh. leaning against the Nice story. work, Ray. Uh, <laughs> Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Tomorrow Never Dies. She was most recently in this mechanic resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, they, There's no word on what she's going to be in the show, if she's going to be that the lieutenant or the non-captain captain, captain mm -hmm. of the Star Trek Discovery. Uh, but what do you think about the casting? I think this is incredible. Uh, it looks like, I was reading on Collider.com today, that it looks like she's going to be the role of, playing the role of number one, actually, so as opposed to the captain, because number one looks like it's going to be the lead. Now, what worries me a little bit about this, nothing to do with Michelle Yeoh. She's fantastic. Actually, she's in, um, which I hope gets renewed. I don't know if it's been canceled yet. They haven't announced it. Is uh, Marco Polo. She's been excellent in that as well. It's a very good show on Netflix. It keeps Check that popping one out. at me on Netflix. Like, watch it. You got to watch this. You don't watch, watch it either, Polo. right? Nope. It was I their most that it was it was 100 million. I, wait, the Geico one? Yes. Cuz I love no, the Geico no, no, one too. So, oh, I it's Susie and Marco Polo. Marco Polo. Hi. Yeah, the show uh, and the little the little llama. Yeah, oh, come it's on, fantastic. It's so good. Yeah. Sorry, uh, go ahead. The show is not nothing. The show is nothing like what these two are talking about. <laughs> it's nothing Netflix like. There's not like it's a me, Marco Polo. <laughs> this is not Mario. This is a serious show. Watch Marco Polo. I'm getting off topic. We're talking about Star Trek. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about Star Trek here. <laughs> no, the casting is great. What I'm interested though to see is what the whole cast is going to be like because what makes a good Star Trek series, whether it's Star Trek: The Next Generation, the original series, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise. It's an ensemble. It's not really, you don't really point out one person in the show and be like, hey, that's why I watched this show. I mean, sure, we talk about the captains, Captain Picard, Captain Kirk, but it's really about the ensemble. Next Generation it had its faults, but it had a great ensemble cast. I loved all the characters. You know, you have some good side characters popping in. They have Whoopi Goldberg come out of nowhere. Deep Space Nine, not oh, as yeah, popular. Whoopi, Whoopi. She Whoopi. Was in that. She was in that. <laughs> yeah. And she's in the movies, too. Um, uh, Deep Space Nine, not as popular of a cast in terms of mainstream like you know, media recognition, but still a fantastic cast. So I hope that they surround Michelle Yeoh with a great supporting cast. And I'm curious to see. I don't know how this is going to unfold. There's been a lot of changes you know brian fuller leaving or stepping down taking a more minor role i mean i hope the creative differences that we're hearing about aren't going to ruin the show because it's supposed to come out next year we definitely talked about it at like length here next on, month. on the show and i'm i'm definitely very tentative about this obviously i'm not a huge star trek fan but i guarantee i i get the historical relevance i get the pulp the, the fan fervor that that comes along with a star yeah. trek but everything that's going on around this doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence however this casting's pretty awesome she's i've never seen her anything that she's not good in sure um what gets me a little bit is why not just tell her tell us that that's who she's going to be she's going to be number one I, I, that, that again i think it goes maybe sasha will bring this up but i think it it goes back to that you know, I don't know if they're not sure what they're doing yet. Yeah. I don't know. With Brian Fuller leaving, maybe they're just not sure what they're going to do yet. I don't well, know. Well, sometimes what they do when they're casting a show is they bring in a ton of different actors mm -hmm. and they just sort of see what part is best for that person. Like, it's not necessarily... Uh, okay, we're going to bring in Michelle Yeoh and it's for number one. Maybe they auditioned her for a number of different roles. They knew she was a fantastic actress. She's got great physicality. And then they just figured out where to slot her in mm. 
that would make the most sense. But I think her casting speaks to a number of things that we've come to expect from Star Trek. Number one, there's gonna be diversity. Number two, I feel like the number two person, or number one in this case, the person who is below the captain, always is sort of the fighter because the captain always gets them in situations where they have to handle business. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's gonna be her role. I hope that's gonna be her role. And that makes me very excited. Uh, captain, don't fly there, son of a, now I gotta fly uh, there. Number one, fly yeah. there. number one. Number yeah. one. Make number it one. so, number one. Number one. Yeah. I just hope she's got that good pinch move going down. She's got that Vulcan pinch move. Although I don't know that she's gonna be a Vulcan, but I just like that she could do that. She's crouching tiger, Vulcan. hidden dragon, man. Yeah, you, th you think they would train people in like, you know, military style combat, like the Vulcan, like that would be one of those moves. Yeah. 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 Um, we. You know, you brought up something kind of cool, okay? Whoopi Goldberg was in the TV yeah. show and then in the movies, yeah. right? We don't ever see that anymore. That And we've talked about it, like, obviously, the Flash. Not with that big not, of a star. Not with that big of a yeah. star. You know, and, and on, in a movie like this, or say somebody <laughs> So from, what you're saying is you want Whoopi Goldberg to do some crossover? No. <laughs> like, you want the view? Well, I think she's, like, part of a race that's like can live a long time, so she could, <laughs> she could, she could pop up. She might be there. No, 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 this, this, is this is a prequel. We're actually yeah, here. This is, this is, spoiler alert. Is we prequel. were going to talk about Whoopi Goldberg later in the show during highs and lows, but yeah. now we're just going <laughs> to... Let's make it. this the Whoopi Goldberg episode. Adam, add it to the tags. Adam, uh, I'm Obviously. sure this will get the most hits of any of our episodes. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, Goldberg episode. the episode. Yeah. Uh, no, I, what I mean is, is that TV show, TV actors from certain series make it into... The movies yeah. where that doesn't really happen anymore. We have our standalones of TV shows and we have our standalones of movies and they don't really cross over. And I think maybe it's just because there's way more actors and actresses and there's way more things you can do now with TV and movies and there's way more channels that we don't see the crossover. Or maybe they just don't well, want to do that. If, think about it. When you're creating like a Sex in the City movie, you're taking the entire cast and you're putting them in an absolutely terrible movie that defiles the memory of a really great show. <laughs> but when you're doing something like... Uh, a Superman movie, yeah. you're casting a brand new Superman, you're creating a platform for a megastar, and they don't necessarily need the platform of television. Yeah. That's why, like I think it's, if it was something where there was an existing beloved franchise, if like if this movie, or sorry, <laughs> if this show, this Star Trek ends mm -hmm. up being incredibly successful, maybe we would see a crossover movie, because you saw Patrick Stewart do crossover yeah, events. I mean, true. all of the, like Shatner used to do the movies on the TV the shows. The new movies are the first time they've you know, it's never transitioned from a television show to a film. This is just the film's new cast with Chris yeah. Pine and everybody. Right. It's the first time I've ever done that. It's always been based off of the TV show. Mm -hmm. But they also used to get more views back. The Next Generation was pulling in like 13 and a half million viewers per week. For a sci-fi show, that's huge. That's huge. That's yeah. yeah, not anymore. <clears throat> okay, uh, next story here. Uh, okay, so Pat uh, Parker Posey uh, was just cast as Dr. Smith in the new Netflix reboot of Lost in Space. And... Dr. Smith was played by Jonathan Harris in the original series and then later by Gary Oldman in that terrible movie with, oh, uh, yeah. our, with our road dog, Matt LeBlanc. Ugh. Did you like that movie? I, I am a Lost in Space, 1998, William Hurt-led apologist. Yes. Okay. I will, I, I, I will defend that. I, it's, it's not great. But I just, it's on HBO. Uh, if you have HBO Go, you can go like watch it in the movie section. Like, watch it. Watch it. It's on HBO. Watch it. It's not bad. I would, I would, I would. It's not great. <laughs> it's just not bad. I would, I would hesitate to say, go watch it. <laughs> I would say, if it pops up on the old TV there and you got and nothing you're really, else really on. Sick, yes. And you physically can't remove yourself from the bed or the couch to get the remote to change the channel and no one's home and you don't have a life alert bracelet, you fall and you literally can't get up. <laughs> Watch it. Watch Lost in Space. It has Matt LeBlanc in it. That's cool. the selling point. <laughs> cool. So did Joey. <laughs> Obviously, that didn't go anywhere. I will Woo. say I liked episodes. Episodes is fantastic. Okay, we've got the train anyway, sorry. is off the <laughs> it tracks. Is, it is. Okay, so this is on Parker Posey yes. playing uh, a traditionally male role. Uh, <laughs> As a female, obviously, as the female Dr. Smith. I, I personally, I obviously don't care, male, female, whatever. Are you going to watch this series? You know what? The fact that Parker Posey is involved, David's eyes are bugging out. They're lighting up. He's so excited. He's like, Lost in Space. Of course I'm going to watch Lost in Space. Josh, ask me that question because I'll watch Lost in Space. I would not have had any interest in it. But Parker Posey's doing it. I and do dig that, Parker Posey. Oh man, yeah. this is one of those yes queen moments. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Yep. <laughs> Going back like Dazed and Confused, but even before that, like uh, The House of Blue Leaves. Like there's been so many movies where she's so good. She was an indie queen. She was. She was, she was basically. Zoe Deschanel before Zoe Deschanel became. Because remember, Joey Deschanel mm -hmm. started in all those like David Gordon Green movies. Yeah. 
And then, you know, obviously she's mainstream now. But Parker Posey, yeah, like you said, her some of her early indie work is Dude, incredible. Late uh, 90s or, or yeah. sorry, late 80s, early 90s. She was running it. Yeah. And that makes me very excited to watch this show. David, I think, was already sold. Yeah. What can we expect from her playing this character? Well, first, I'd like to thank Josh McCuga for writing this excellent script today. We got to start off with two science fiction shows back <laughs> to back. Star Trek and then Lost in Space. And then we're going to um, talk about Westworld eventually. And then Westworld. This is a great show. Uh, what I am curious about Parker Posey is to see how she's going to play a villain. Because the Dr. Smith is a very interesting multi-layered character. As I know the Lost in Space film was not great, but Gary Oldman is a Look great is a great yeah, actor. And I think that he did he played Dr. Smith well. He had those kind of different layers to him. So I'm gonna be curious to see how she does that. I think she can pull it off. I can't wait to see it. Let's go we're talking about all these nice female leads in these shows. Star Trek, female led. Now we have this show, it's gonna have a, a nice female lead in it. But as it's well. gotta be a science fiction thing, because if it's grounded in reality, people yeah, are like, not, ah, people don't buy it. It's like, yeah, I'm like in the future, like two thousand years from now. Sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Not, not, not sure. Now, then she could be a captain. That's right, yeah. yeah. I uh I first of all love Parker Posey and all the Christopher Christopher Guest movies to me, she's oh always a highlight. Oh my god. Her in Best in Show is incredible. And I just watched Mascots. Did you guys watch Mascots no. on Netflix? Did you watch Mascots mm -hmm. on Netflix? I highly recommend it. It's the same Christopher Guest movie, you know, like redone that he always does. But there's always laughs. It's always funny. And the mascots was was basically on the nose what I thought it would be and didn't disappoint. So does anybody here, and this is spelled S-C-H-I-T-T -T apostrophe S. Oh, Schitt's Creek. Does anybody watch Schitt's Creek? It's incredible. Because Eugene Levy, or Levy. Le Eugene Levy? I think it's Levy. Levy? Levy? Whatever. He's amazing. And Catherine O'Hara. Yeah. And it, like nobody, I guess it's because it's Canadian. People yeah. don't really pay any attention it's to it. CBC, but I God, think. they're good. Mm. Um, I, I've caught a bunch of episodes and I mean, they're two brilliant actors, yeah. so it, it can't be. And it's his son. His son plays his son. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool show. And it, yeah, I think it's weird how certain countries TV shows have translated well for us in certain extents and some others haven't. Obviously we, we feast on British television. Mm -hmm. We love it. I love trailer park boys and I know that, that, uh, that's obviously a Canadian show, but there aren't many other Canadian shows. What? I mean, Degrassi. Dude, Orphan Black. But I, but, yeah. that is such a small amount of people That's that true, watch that. Yeah. Like, Good I team. love Orphan Black. You like Orphan Black. You like Orphan Black. But we are in a very small minority. Really? When, I don't when think she so. Won the, when she won the Emmy, my mom was like, I've never heard of the this show. The numbers aren't the show. So the aren't, middle of America. Huge. I mean, compared to like, you know, some of the bigger shows. But you're talking not... about shows that translate. And I'm saying a show that translates. Oh, I'm, I'm saying more of oh, translates. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm saying more of like a pop culture kind of, oh. you know, fervor. If but you again, will. I feel like Orphan Black is a huge, like within the zeitgeist of nerdom. It's huge. Yeah, it's got a sure. big fan base for sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. But... But it doesn't have the kind of, you know, my mom watched Downton Abbey with her friends oh, kind of sure. thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even Walking Dead. Like my mom doesn't watch Walking Dead, but she knows, like, oh, Walking Dead, yeah, I know what that. She knows of it. Right. You know, well, not, people not that are saying world. that your show that you loved so much that I could not get through, Fleabag, is going to possibly be a big one to watch during the Golden Globes. Yes, yeah. it should. Of course it should. I really not enjoy that show. No, man. I, did you watch all six episodes? No, I, could I told not you. Get like, it. I think I told you to get to episode four. I think was the episode. I could not do that because the uh, other because episodes one. It's two one where was she goes in the retreat. So man, I, I dug. I, 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 I would. Like I would recommend sticking with Fleabag. A show I wouldn't recommend sticking with was because I love my girlfriend. Uh, I watched the third episode of Good Behavior, and now the television. Oh. In, now the television in my bedroom may or may not be broken. Uh, Good for you. Because that show is just horrendous. It's is Amanda terrible. enjoying it? Uh, she loves it for oh. some what? reason. Yeah. Go on, girl. Tony. Watch the show you like. Watch the shows that <laughs> the you like. The promo came up, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like even the promo made me yes. mad. Yes. There we go. Poor okay. Uh, listen, this show is going fantastic thus far. <laughs> Where's your name? Where's your name? This is what happens. <laughs> this Mom's happens. away, and um, it just all goes to pod. Yep. If you guys want to know what a, a podcast of David, Sasha, and I sitting around talking about television, just watch the first ten minutes of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> like, give us an hour and a okay, microphone. Wait, we'll talk about whatever. Since you're completely off the rails, sure. Has anybody watched? search party yet because oh I we talked last week <laughs> that's you know tbs right tbs yeah. show yeah we talked about it last week i was going to throw it in the highs and lows but i didn't oh do it God. again it's so, it's so good it's so good man you have to watch search party Search Party. Okay. It's, it's, it's on tbs you can binge the whole thing it's, it's really good it, it's an indie movie it's yeah. an indie movie and i love it and i knew that's why you like it because you love your indies like me okay <laughs> let's go into superhero rundown uh, uh things that are not very indie uh the <laughs> superhero rundown the I this week obviously we're leading up to and I bet we should, we should probably tease next week. Oh poop! I wait. Is it this week? No, it's next week. Next I, week I is the four part. So today, yeah. today is the yeah, four. Starts today. Starts tonight. today. Mm -hmm. uh, starts Not tonight. Recording set. So a week <laughs> from today, uh, we will talk about all four 
episodes in a standalone. So we'll tease it here on TV Talk. We'll talk a little bit about it with our thing, and then we're going to bring in hopefully a couple other superhero uh, fanatics to talk about the four uh, four part crossover in a separate episode outside of TV Talk. So look for that next week because we got a four part. They keep showing the trailer. It looks freaking sweet. Um, Humans versus. <laughs> Oh no, heroes versus, versus aliens. Yeah. Yes. It's better than cowboys versus aliens. Heroes, it should be. A it should hero be. will rise. So uh, let's talk some Supergirl. Sash Pro Raver. Oh, man. Your only show you're watching. So in well, the CW lineup. This in the week, CW lineup. In this yeah, so far. Although yeah. we we had no spoilers, but we got a promo for something that I'm gonna be mm. watching. What's happening? Well, CW. We're talking about things on the CW that oh, are yes. Oh yes, later. 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 But later. stay out of Riverdale. So this episode. The two things that really stuck out to me, again, the whole Alex Maggie storyline mm -hmm. is just like, g -g 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 -g. Yeah. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I think the actresses are doing such a phenomenal job. Uh, the other thing that I think is very interesting is we are heading for a rare romantic quadrant. Yes. We are not gonna have a love triangle. We're gonna have a quadrile. Quad quadrangle. Uh, I love believe it's a rectangle. Well, depends on the size. A love so quadrangle. We're gonna have containment and Jimmy. And containment. But that's his name. Mon-El. Yeah. Mon containment. Is Captain, containment. No, let's just call him. Let's let's make Captain him a super, Containment. Thank you. There Thank you Captain go. Containment. Captain Containment. Mm -hmm. Captain Containment, and then eggs, Jimmy. And then guardian. Uh, guardian, guardian eggs, guardian, guardian eggs, and then nerdy uh, windbags. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, what's his superhero name going to be? Uh, Captain Computer. Captain Computer. But isn't he like moved on? Mm, he's still a little still, up in there. In the I felt like he's always been. Yeah. He loves a little Benoist. His heart beats for Benoist. His heart beats for yeah. Okay. So yeah. uh, that, I feel like this episode became the first one where we really saw like the beginnings mm -hmm. of that. In terms of fight sequences, can we throw a spoiler alert up? Yeah. Ah, spoiler Shorty. alert. One of my favorite things in any superhero film or show is when they show you them when they are weakened. Mm -hmm. And I thought that they handled that really interestingly in terms of with... Um, why did you want to call her Lexiana Luther? Lena Luther. Lena Luther. Uh, putting the like titanium whatever helmet, like the crazy like solar flare helmet mm -hmm. on her, and then seeing the way that she was adjusted and couldn't actually function and do the stuff. I love that yeah. because you need to have. It's so boring to have a hero who is always capable. And I loved that moment of like seeing the weakness in Kara. I thought yeah. it was really. But again, like but I feel I, like the romantic entanglements are my favorite part of the show, which is such a girl <laughs> thing for me to say. Sorry. Well, that's why Supergirl appeals to everybody, and uh, especially I, I listen and. So in Arrow, you know, they kind of jammed the Olicity thing down our throat for a little bit and the Laurel Lance thing for, for whatever. And that sometimes worked, it sometimes didn't. And I think it, it like turned a lot of fans off from it. But for this one, it just seems a little more organic. Yeah. You know, that they're not trying to jam it down our throat. And, and that's what I like about it. I will say, I really enjoy the storyline of Martian Manhunter mm -hmm. becoming a white Martian. Oh. That he, his blood was, you know, mixed with the white Martian and she didn't do it on she didn't do it on purpose to like eliminate the green Martian, but we don't know if she maybe did or not. But oh, like she I seems, thought that it was actually. Do you think she's do you think she's I a thought genuine? It was, yeah, I thought it was sort of like oh Excuse geez. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um I thought it was sort of like how Beast became Beast. Like I okay. know that I want to like make an adjustment, but I don't know what the adjustment will become. Okay. But that was my that was my speculation. Yeah, I'm know. curious to see what uh cyborg Superman cyborg is Superman. up to. He went up to the Fortress of Solitude, yeah. you know, he wants some information uh on the project there, so that should be interesting to see. As far as episodes go, I don't know if this was one of my favorites of the season, but yeah. as a season as a whole, I've been really enjoying watching Supergirl this yeah, season. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun again. I didn't it is fun yeah. again. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the one thing they do best on CW is they make these shows a little more fun. Than, than maybe a network would. I think they, they know what they're writers, doing. Yeah. yeah, they know what their shows are. They know what they want, what kind of world they want to create, and they do a good job of it. They execute it fairly well. Sometimes, you know, that's a bump, especially like with Arrow and other shows. I think they're doing a good job this season. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right, let's talk Flash. Um, I, we get a ton of hate in the comments <laughs> each week when we rank our where we see certain shows because I think everybody is still really, really on this Flash bandwagon with it can do no wrong well, because and the thing is, it's besides this episode was a nice comeback because we're still seeing that they're like going to deal with killer frost right. and realize like i know fans out there you're passionate <clears throat> you want to support your shows you don't want to hear i think people worry that if we speak badly about something's going to get out in the media is going to hurt the show <laughs> like not really um but also too it's like 
even writers and creators of shows don't love every single episode they do. They'll admit weaknesses. I think Stephen DeKnight, for me, who's now working on the director of Pacific Rim 2, did Spartacus. Those first couple episodes were horrible. Let me you, if you ever watch, tell you to watch Spartacus, one of my favorite shows of all time, but you're going to watch like David, those first episodes are horrible. Stephen DeKnight's admitted that those episodes are bad. He knows that just because there's a fan, a, a rabid fan base behind the show doesn't mean you have to like every single episode. Like every episode has to be perfect and it's the best episode. If you feel that way, awesome. But not every episode is going to be great. There's hits and misses. It's mm -hmm. like there's hits and misses with films. I mean, it's just how it works. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean like we hate the show or moving off the show. Or it's just maybe this week we weren't as into the story and the, the characters as we were another week, but that's the beauty yeah. of television is it can rebound. It can recover. It's fun watching that work in an organic way. Shows evolve. They, they change. And that's something that's beautiful to watch on. That's why I love television. It's yeah. fun to watch. I thought that it was this episode was a little anticlimactic in the sense of how Wally West finally got mm -hmm. his speed. Well, we should probably throw up a spoiler. Oh, right? spoiler. Nailed it. Nailed it, Bakuga. Spoiler. <laughs> we should probably cut that. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Collider <laughs> TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFreeze, uh, talking about <laughs> Flash. Uh, if you see, the spoiler alert is on there, so don't want to spoil anything for you. Uh, my bad on that one, guys. But seriously, we knew he was going to get it eventually, but I thought that this was a little anticlimactic. They yes. wrap him in the cocoon. The cocoon? They wrap him in the cocoon. Uh, they, and then Joe gets in there with a little mini saw. He rips him out. Then how they like kind of bring him back. I thought the Savitar was a cool effect. I like the Savitar. I like Savitar! Like Savitar! Oh, Look at the Transformer. Uh, he did. He looks like Megatron. We said that. I feel like I am right, going yeah. to hate Savitar. this show. No, no, no. I it's am a good very, show. No, Flash very is good. concerned because I'm going to watch the four part crossover. Yeah, and I am very. No. Why? I'm excited to see what you think You're, about Legends I, of Tomorrow. I'm really excited to see Why did you just Legends. go, no. No. Why? I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like it. I think you will. You guys don't seem to like it that no, much. I like the show. I, I, no. You like the show. I just, like I just thought we were waiting all season to get to the Wally West speed thing, mm -hmm. and we did. And then they turned Killer Frost on us so quickly. Like, I don't know. It just felt like that there was a lot of things rushed in this episode along with the big bad. And now Tom Felton mm -hmm. is going to find his his superpower via Dr. Alchemy. Like Alchemy is, is basically it king. <laughs> it's, it's it is. Magic. He has a stone. Is he has a magic? sorcerer's stone. No way. He has a sorcerer's okay, stone. Okay, maybe I like the show. Yeah. Yes. All right. He, he's Draco again. It's Draco. In the back. <laughs> he just shows up in robes and we're like, yeah. Yes. yes. He's Draco. Oh, there's going to be a radical quidditch. No, game. but I, I'm, like I said, I said this last week. I'm happy that Daniel. <laughs> what if that was the four part crossover? It was just a quidditch tournament <laughs> with Tom I'd watch it. I'd watch the Quidditch tournament. I'd watch it. The, what is it, like the, 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 the so Nimbus awesome. 5000 or whatever? Uh, they oh, yeah, so Nimbus, 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 and Nimbus Supergirl Nimbus doesn't need a broom because she can just fly. Because she can fly. Oh, I'd be so into yeah. it. Spare Pitch that at the CW. Oh, Superhero God. Quidditch. Come on. Uh, who's watching? Um, Come on. But I'm happy that Daniel Panabaker is getting something interesting to do. I've complained over the last couple of years that she doesn't have enough to do. She's she's just kind of there, you know, and I'm glad they're actually giving her something to do as Killer Frost. I agree. I think maybe it's a little rushed. But I'm glad at least she's having something to do besides I, kind of. I being like in the, the killer softness. I really like it. Yeah. I just wish yeah, it was a little more like she went evil immediately. Well, I feel like it's weird with a show that's 23 episodes a season. They are really rushing. We should, we should have spent more time in Flashpoint. Yeah, more time in Flashpoint, more. taking their time. Two or three episodes in that reality. They, they are moving quick. I don't know what they're trying to get to. They have I, 23 hours, whereas like Game of Thrones has 10. Walking Dead has 16. They have 23 hours of show agreed. to work with. I don't know what their rush is. Why Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, okay, let's get into... But we like the show. I never like said I didn't show. like the show. We like we're, the Flash. We are just talking about what's going on and mm -hmm. our likes and dislikes, mm -hmm. where it is, uh, yada, yada, yada. Let's get to Westworld. <laughs> Throw that spoiler <laughs> Put alert Put that spoiler up. alert off, and guys. And if you guys haven't watched... We're going to give you a little bit of time to turn off your computer or switch to the next story. I think it looks like the Hulk. Because you can't talk Westworld <laughs> without talking a bunch of spoilers. Yeah. I'm going to hand it over to our, uh, our queen of Westworld. You guys. The mother, the the whorehouse leader, if you will. Oh, no. The first of her name. The, the first of her name. The madam. the madam. She is the madam. Josh, so keep it a classic. I am. <laughs> oh, thanks, so, bud. Yeah. I got a safe filled with nothing. <laughs> Come and get it. Okay, you guys, this episode. So let's just get right to the nitty gritty. Yeah. The show ends. Last chance to go away. All right, you're still here. Yeah. The show ends with the reveal that Bernard is actually Arnold. And about five seconds before it happened, I was like, A, B. A.P. Arnold Bernard. Like, I, I figured it out right then. Yeah. The thing that flipped me at the start of the episode is the room where they are meeting. The room where Dolores and Arnold slash Bernard are meeting is the same room where now Ford has his secret, like, underground Later. bunker, yeah. which I had not made the connection till until today. 
I am starting to believe that every single person in the park is a host. Because if Bernard has been running around that park being fake Arnold for 30 years and no one's really noticed that he doesn't age. So now if Arnold has a deeper game and the deeper game has always been perhaps to create robots that are essentially human, is the second storyline just about those robots that he's sort of set in motion, which are all the older models, yeah. becoming fully sentient? When they were sitting there in the church, like... <laughs> that was awesome. That was cool. That was that awesome. Was cool. But, okay. Oh, there's so many things Because somebody tweeted about. at us today, uh, if Bernard is Arnold... Because th th this was the tweet that I put, because if you didn't watch last night's episode... Do we have, an, uh, uh, do we have a graphic of that tweet? So here's the tweet. It came from uh, from Jim Fickus or Fix J Fix eighty eight. Josh, what actor does everyone envision playing Arnold in Westworld? And I put this in here because if you didn't watch last night's, we could like posturize. But we know that you know we know who Arnold is. Now. We know who Arnold is. Uh, okay, but here's the thing that I think is so interesting. Okay, that final scene with Dolores and Arnold where she says, I killed you. And they have this beautiful sort of intimate connection. Did Arnold ask for Dolores to kill him so that his brain and being could go into a robot version of himself, whether, and because doesn't Ford say repeatedly, oh no, Ford says, I built you. Mm -hmm. Is that the real end game? Is it that he asked to be killed by Dolores so that he could come here and like try to take down Ford because this whole thing is just a giant chess match and Ford says, we've been here before, we've done this before. We know that fool isn't dead. We know he didn't shoot himself and like he's actually like dead on the floor because he's a host, which means Elsie can bring him back. We still need to know what's going on with Elsie because she's mm -hmm. somewhere in the park. What happened with the lesser Hemsworth? Why was the he taken out, out by this native the tribe whites. who we <laughs> they're, who they're don't like respond the wild to whites of West Virginia? Right? Yeah. They're like they're the white tribe or whatever. We don't know, but why don't they respond to voice commands? Are they the people who have? Or all did Ford did Ford say? Because with that Vulture article that you sent us was really good. Is is Ford controlling those Indians saying like, oh, get him? Like he took he took away. Yeah, like maybe like, oh, like maybe Elsie so. and uh, Thor's brother are like together somewhere imprisoned. Well, I think that they're free people. I think the reason that they don't respond to voice commands is the same reason Angela didn't respond to voice commands and was able to like figure out a way to kill uh, the man in black without actually killing the man in black, mm -hmm. even though she didn't kill the man in black. But that scene was awesome mm -hmm. with the noose around the horse. What do you think, David? I think there's something bigger that we're we still not aware of. That even the fan theories haven't grasped yet. Um, because I feel like our, um, Anthony Hopkins' character is aware, Ford is aware of everything that's going on in the park. Uh, most everything, not, not, not everything, most everything. And I think that the maze, he knows what the maze is. Because remember, he knows that, um, <clears throat> uh, his name, um, William. William. Logan. Logan. No, uh, uh, Dolores. Guess, no, uh, Apollo 13. Why can't they give Ed Harris? Ed, Ed Harris, Harris, the man Ed in black. Harris. The man in black, man, the man in black's character, he knows Apollo 13 is the that he, know, he knows what quest he's on. He, he knows what quest he's on. He, he met him at the bar and said, you know, are you, you going to try to stop me? He's like, no, you go ahead and do what you got to do. I think there's something else to play that we haven't seen yet because I feel like we don't, we don't know what his end game is yet. We don't know what Ford's end game is yet. I don't know if he's just a megalomaniac, but I think that I don't know. I just don't think he, I don't think we know the end game yet. I don't what know. I don't have a solid theory. That's what I'm trying to say, but I feel like he Ford is the he's a game changer. I still think Ford might be a host. I think Ford could be a host version of himself. What about the fact that all of the hosts have been sort of activated to whatever their like core cornerstone is mm -hmm. by trauma? Mm -hmm. What about that? What about the fact that like whenever you have like a severe moment of trauma, that's how you sort of get back to whatever your earlier earlier memories are? What about the thought that the reason the man in black dragged Dolores into the barn and we don't know what happened. We assumed when we saw the first episode, he was probably raping her, but maybe he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was just forcing her when he said, remember to get back to those earlier mm -hmm. thoughts so that she could Take go back on this. Yeah. I don't think it's about the maze. I truly believe the maze is a neural pathway between what you, your, your awareness is and what Arnold put into the skulls. That's but, what I but think. But I, I think Bernard was a MacGuffin, a device to think, get, get yeah. them to a certain point. But I feel like now that she met him, it's like, I can't help you because I'm dead. Like he's not the answer to what she needs to, to seek. I don't think Bernard's gonna be. You mean Arnold? Bernard. Arnold, sorry, Ar Bernard is gonna Bernard be the foil. <laughs> is, is, is gonna be the foil that messes up Ford's plan. I don't. I just don't. I think because she spoke to him in her subconscious and her mind. And he said, "I can't help you. I'm already dead. What do you want me to do?" 
I mean, she, she, she talked to him or his essence. But if he's that's dead, her... that doesn't mean Bernard is dead. And Bernard, yeah. who they will reactivate, mm -hmm. could be the key to some stuff. Now, Makuga. Talk to me. Let's be honest. Yeah. You don't love the show. I don't. I don't, I don't love it, but I, I, I tell you what, the first, and, and I've been very honest about the whole situation, uh, uh, the first few episodes of this show were very tedious and boring mm -hmm. to me, because I was like, just melt the robots. But now, cause <laughs> I'm, yeah, it's like, yeah, just melt them all. But now I'm okay. seeing, now I'm seeing that there's something way bigger going on here in the sense of like, what is, what, what I'm most interested in and in what, what, Ford is talking about, and I loved, I loved the scene when the man in black gets interrupted by Tessa Thompson. Oh, yeah. And he's like, I don't like to be interrupted, right? And well, because it he's brings you he's back to, like, this is just a game. He yeah. plays his, like he's, his he's, cosplay is legit. Because you're watching, cosplay. like, you're, you're brought into this scene, and it's like, oh, he's yeah. going to die. And then she comes in, like, in her nice high heels and her outfit, just being like, hey, like, let's have a talk, like a regular conversation. Okay, I'm out. Like, right. it's just a game. Like, he's not really, he's not really in danger. Really, I mean, it's like it's it's crazy. It's still just but a game. But he is, but he's so competitive in this he is, game, yeah, that it's pretty much real life for him. Uh, and he's on the board of this thing. We figure out that he's on the board of this thing, and he may or may not be, you know, somebody that's pulling a lot of strings as well. Mm. Or if he's trying to get to the bottom of Ford's master plan here, I want to I want to think in terms of practicality and not so much your your awesome tin hat theories because okay. I do really enjoy well, them. Practicality, we can assume the man in black and William are the same person. Yes. And that I'm assuming the man in black planted that photo that we see Logan give William of the wife slash sister. That, that Dolores then, gets dug up, that she digs up. Exactly. Yes. And she, Dolores, recognizes it. Mm -hmm. And Abernathy is like, it doesn't look like anything to me. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like the first skits out. But for a minute, didn't Dolores recognize that photo? Hadn't she seen it before? She kept it because she recognized something in it, remember? Like, she kept it because she was so interested in it. But what if she saw it before from William and he was like, this is the reason I'm leaving. This is why I have to go because this is the woman I'm marrying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that right now, I said last week that there are at least three timelines at play. Because we are watching Dolores's like weird psychological breakdown, mm -hmm. I think it's becoming more difficult to figure out which timelines we're actually in. Yes, that's but, what's kind of kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Right? Yeah. Uh, what do we think is going you know to happen? A you know, there's a theory like that, that um, Ed Harris, the man in black, might be Logan's dad. That's a dumb, no. No, it's not a dumb theory. There are no dumb theories. Because no one knows. We don't know what it's going to be. We yeah. don't know. We might not even. I, well, they said it's not going to end on a cliffhanger. No. They did say that. Okay. For the finale. What do we think <clears throat> is going to happen in the finale? I feel like we should all write it down on a piece of paper, <laughs> give it to Cody, and we'll open it on air next week. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to do that. Oh. Uh, okay. Man, it's a lot. Because here's the thing. I, I after last night's episode, I, I'm your thought of everybody's a host just jumped in my head and I was like, yep, that's, I could see everybody being a host. Why, why are, does nobody notice that Bernard ages? And yes. the fact that Lesser Hemsworth couldn't, like he had that weird moment with Bernard and Teresa and was like, yeah. wait, how did you not notice this? But now I'm starting to think he might be a host too. They're all well, hosts. I'm curious yeah. to see who, remember when um, we know that Bernard, we saw Anthony Hopkins family through Bernard's eyes and the guy who was uh, Anthony Hopkins dad uh, Ford's dad looked like the Arnold. guy in the picture. Looked like yeah, the guy in the picture who was supposed to be the well, Arnold. Who's not Arnold? No, there's three guys in the picture. One is Arnold. One is uh, the Hopkins. dad, and one right. is Ford. So yeah. who? I wonder what Anthony Hopkins' dad really looks like. If but that was actually Anthony him. Hopkins' dad is a host, and I think that was like one of their first hosts. Yeah. Oh, that's because why it was the they same first picture. generation. So, so, first generation. So, so when, when he when Bernard looked at that picture, the guy who was supposed to be Bernard, Arnold, Arnold, who was supposed to be Arnold is the same character who played Anthony Hopkins' dad. Again, we see through Bernard's eyes what Anthony Hopkins' family supposedly looks like in right. that cabin. That's the same guy. So yeah. who, what does his dad really look like? Who has he seen? That's what I want. I don't know. I mean, that's another layer, too. I don't know. It's an it might not be important. It's know. an onion inside of an onion inside of an onion. All I know is that if it ends with a spinning top, I'm going yeah. to wreck shop. Do we think, so I, I think they might go off world. Well, but here's the thing. What if Future World is the world in which Westworld exists? And if we leave Westworld, you go to Future World because Future World is the actual future. Man, that's like getting that's off like on Matrix. the wrong tram at the Atlanta airport. Yeah. You have no I'm idea where you are. I don't know. You guys. Man. And then Roman World is the crossover episode with uh, with Game of Thrones. And can <laughs> we just say, why does Logan have that weird pin that looks like the hand yes. of the king? Yeah. Pin like every time I see cool him, pin. I'm like, I keep yeah. thinking, does he have that because pin. he's not a host? 
He has that because it's the Hand of the King crossover event where they go to Roman world and Roman world is Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's probably not true. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So there's our Westworld stuff. We, so next week here on TV Talk, uh, Cody, you can take the spoiler alert off if you want. Uh, next week here on TV Talk, we are going to talk, obviously talk the finale of Westworld. And we're going to do an extended discussion of the entire series. Uh, as well as the finale and kind of geek out for a little bit longer than we Can't normally wait. would. So look forward to that. Uh, I, I know for me, this has been a roller coaster of a series because it started out that I was dating a girl that I hated. And now I'm dating a girl that I'm falling in love with, but I don't know if she's cheating on me. Are you having fire tent sex? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. All right. I hope yeah. that happens for you. <laughs> okay. Let's go into our pilot review this week of 3% on Netflix. Uh, it is a Brazilian show, uh, all in Portuguese. And I got made fun of in the comments the last time we discussed a show that was, had subtitles, saying that subtitles were distracting. Uh, but <laughs> I don't like reading subtitles and that I don't read or something like that. But this one, uh, I, I got to tell you, the the subtitles didn't distract me. I thought this show was was weird. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was entertaining. I mm -hmm. thought it was very entertaining. Had had a lot of vibes of uh, Hunger Games. Had a lot of vibes of uh, like a Blade Runner. It had a lot of vibes of like Terminator 2 and the families underground. Uh, it just like it has those post-apocalyptic typical tropes of everything. Lord of the Flies. Lord of the Flies oh. kind of thing. It, had, it has that all. I don't know if it was great enough that it's going to get me excited for another one, but I th it's only eight episodes, so I think I'm just going to binge it. What do you think, Sash? I think the reason that, that you didn't mind the subtitles is because you don't need subtitles if you've seen any of the Hunger Games movies. <laughs> I mean... Oh, no. Oh, uh, <laughs> David G. Griffin. It's not that bad. David H.W. Griffin the fourth. What are you what? talking oh, about? Oh, Snapple, you guys. Uh -oh. You can't see it, but we can. She caught here just in time to talk about hot people running. She's coming in with her fly-ass scarf and her cute Scarfing little butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's nasty. It's nasty. Go ahead. Hey, Hi, hey. girly. What's Yay. happening? Everybody, can we give it up for Sinead DeFries? Let's give it up. Sinead DeFries, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Look at us there. We got our new we aerial new cam angle. brought to you yeah, by Goodyear Blimp. That was amazing. Uh, there we go. Flying hey. over. Hi, guys. Hi, girl. It's, Sinead's got we her We were scarf. just talking about 3%. Oh yeah! What'd you yeah. think? I I actually liked it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Welcome back, Sinead DeFries. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like groundbreaking. It didn't change my life. Sure. But it was enjoyable, right? It was all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Between Allegiant, Divergent, Maze and, Runner, Maze Runner, like Scorch Trials, and uh, Hunger, Hunger Games, Games. Okay. where does now three percent fit? Um, I would say it is not as good as the first Hunger Games. <laughs> Definitely better than all the other Hunger Games, <laughs> and definitely better than all the Allegiant, Divergent, Maze Runner stuff. Okay. Wow. wow. All right. But I'm also like a huge not fan of. See, here's Divergent, the thing that's Allegiant, different from Maze Runner three percent than those ones is there aren't as many hot people running. Like they're hottish, they but they run. really ugly them up. There's no running. They in didn't this, run really. yet. No, no running yet. Yeah. We can see the running coming. Maybe. You think I, they were like, oh man, this is like we got to make these people a little uglier because <laughs> well, of TV talks and, constant and make hot them people running. run less. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, David Griffin, get get down on it. Yeah, this show is good. It, <laughs> it's it, it's not cookie cutter. If this was on like CBS or ABC, it'd be all like yeah, that, that sheen on. They have that filter on there. This is unfiltered. Yeah, they're beautiful, but they're Brazilian. Brazilians are just naturally beautiful yeah, people. True. They can't help it. They, just live, they, they wake up beautiful. That's just how it is. She knows how she knows what I'm talking about. I so, really um, need Sinead I liked. Fletcher. I think it's interesting. I think they went for it. I want to see more. I, I, I like the whole Lord of, Lord of the Flies, Hunger Games style. And Hunger Games wasn't the first of its kind either. There was stuff Battle Royale came. I mean, it's not, it's not like... This is completely unoriginal, yeah. I don't think. I, I'm still interested to see where this is going to go. I, I'll watch at least a couple more. I'm not saying this is the best show on television, but no, I'd like to see a couple more. I though. guess my problem with it was <clears throat> I found it incredibly predictable. Like, we're sitting yeah. here and we're, you know, postulating on all these different things that might be going on in Westworld, and I feel like I can tell you, I will write on a piece of paper how this show is going to end, and you can let me know if I'm right. 
because I feel like I could. Well, I saw fun, this episode okay, play out one hundred percent. You missed. Uh, so we talked about Westworld right mm-hmm. before you got here. Unfortunately, uh, you weren't part of that discussion. But we're going to write down what we think is going to happen in the finale on okay. a piece of paper. We're going to give it to Cody, and they're going to see if any of us were right. Oh, I like that. Yay! Uh, so uh, if you guys want to binge three percent and see what happens, oh. you can write it down because you probably won't. Sure. No, oh, definitely not. Okay, so she can write it down, and then we can binge. I'll it accept it, that challenge. I will finish it by next week. Sasha it's only six episodes. Right. Actually, it's only six episodes. No, it's eight. I thought it was six. It's eight on my Netflix. Hmm. Uh, it's, it should only be three, if you ask me. <laughs> 3%, three, three, oh, get it? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, I I thought that when it started, because you you texted me, this is going to be Josh's new favorite show. Yeah. Uh, and I, when it first started, I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to like this. And then by the end, I was like, sort of like how Hunger Games got me. I was like, ah, this is going to be stupid. And then I liked it. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump. I'm, I'm going to jump. I want to see board. what's on the island. I want to see what's out yeah, there. Yeah, I do uh, want to see uti- the island. Utopia. Because if we don't get, if this whole show goes and we don't get to that island, I am going to be royally pissed. Like it's we're kinda, stuck in that like office it's building. It's watchable. Like, right? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Like one of those I, easy I'm ones. I'm like fight and biting my tongue so hard not to just say what I think happens. Don't tell. Don't, don't spoil it. Don't, don't spoil it for me. I, I haven't watched it. I'm well, just like I feel like it. I'm not spoiling it. She's I'm, not spoiling it. I'm just postulating. Okay, so let's uh, let's just give it uh, out of five piles of burned rag clothes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What would you give this, Sinead? Let's start with you. Uh, I'll give it a solid three. All right, David Griffin. I'll give it a three point five. Okay, I'm gonna go with Sinead three. I'm going three two. I just, <laughs> I just, oh. I can't watch a show that is a three. Okay. Like, oh. and also, I will Ooh, say great. the the fake rips on their clothes really bothered. Yeah, me. that was pretty bad. Like the the like, oh, I'm just 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 stressing my denim. It just really bugged that, me. That was I can't one thing invest really... in a show that is a three. Yeah. 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 Okay. Life's too short, bro. Guys, don't invest in threes. That's no. the Sasha when not Pearl when Raver. it comes to dating. Lesson of the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, let's go into highs, uh, highs and lows this week. Uh, Sinead doesn't have a computer in front of her, so I guess I'll just lead this. Um, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Sinead's like, I'm just gonna sit here. So <laughs> no, cute. no, no. Wear an awesome look, sweatshirt. <laughs> make everybody happier because I'm here. Always Hello looking like fresh. always that, looking like a it's hella, 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 oh, hella fresh. fresh. Hella I fresh. need that shirt. I like that. I got it at a Goodwill for like four dollars. Oh my god, it's the Sinead, bomb. I will say this. I saw a tweet a couple days ago, and you said, "Hey, uh, Black Friday's here. Shanasty needs something cool." I was like, I like that she's calling herself Shanasty in the third Cyber person. Monday. Now. Yes. Hey, girl. <laughs> okay, let's start highs and lows. The Walking Dead. Did you watch last night, no, David? Um, I can't do it anymore. Oh Yay! no! So I went Life's off too it. short. So Life's too I, short. I, I was watching Westworld with Sasha last I love night. the Terra. And as I was sitting there, I was like, I have to watch The Walking Dead. That show makes me sad. Uh, and this got, is, and I, got, I got sad thinking about it. And I'm yeah. like, I just don't want to watch this it. Is, I don't want to be sad I, anymore. Okay. Th- we started the night by watching Jackie, and I was like, this sucks. We're turning it off. And we turned it off, and we went to Westworld because life too short. Okay. Well, I was a fan of the Terror episode. You guys can see all of our uh, full episode recaps with Dennis Zen, myself, John Roca, Perry Nemiroff here on uh, Collider Video. Okay, rectify. Who was this an episode? Yeah, it's a heartbreaker. It was so good. Samoa. It just shows you why it's one of the best shows on television that no one's watching. God, this this show. Uh, one of the writers on Collider.com, Allison Keen is her name. Yeah. She, I, we, we've been emailing. I wanted to know some things that she was talking about on TV. I'm trying to get her on the show. Nice. She lives in Atlanta. Trying to get her on Skype. to come on. Yeah, do maybe do a Skype interview. Or I just wanted her to come on to, you know, to be a guest here on the show. And she said, "Rectify is everything." She loves Rectify, which made me happy because I really want all of you guys to watch Rectify because it is so so good. And it's such this a, episode, I yeah. was crying like a baby at points. I mean, it was a really it's such really a simple good show too. I mean, yeah. it doesn't try to pretty easily. I yeah. do. I'm a cryer. True. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a must watch. It's on yeah. Netflix. So go, go catch up to Hi. Right now. Uh, let's talk This Is Us, the Thanksgiving episode. Oh, uh, hi. Come on. Hi. So, the show just continues to be so brilliant. Sterling K. Brown. I mean, we're talking, what? Only issue I have with it. Hold on. Let go. me see if it's the same issue Jason had. And? You should not barbecue a hot dog over an open, like. Gas flame. That is just on a so bad it's for really you. not good. That's so bad for you. It's terrible. Wait, what, what, what are we watching, Discovery Channel? No, but like, if here's the <clears> thing. If he would have taken like a plate and put it on like a heater yeah. or like gone outside and they're like, let's get some sticks and start a fire yeah. with hot dogs. I mean, do it. Guys, a gas flame on a heater. That's really bad for really, you. Re- not only really bad for your health, but it's very, very dangerous. Like oils could drip down that they and get stuck in it and start a fire like really easily. Please, as, as a person of somewhat knowledgeable stuff with this, don't do that. And anybody who's lived in the ghetto knows you should never, ever use your oven as a heater. Never. 
Lesson of the week, take two. <laughs> take two. And also, don't eat hot dogs because they're disgusting. Yes, also on the hot dogs. David Griff. <laughs> Let's this episode had zero weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best Thanksgiving episode I've ever seen. I really mean that. It, it was good. We had that question a couple weeks back, and we're thinking of answers. This is now my new favorite this Thanksgiving This is definitely episode. in the Did it make you want to watch Airplane 3? Airplane 3? Or, sorry, Police Academy 3. <laughs> no. Oh, I've what? Seen that one. Police I've Academy seen, 3 yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. It was so great. This was good, though. Here's the one thing about This Is Us uh, that... It, it's a it's a not a sitcom it's you know it's a, a an hour drama but it makes you want to see the next episode where a lot of times in some of these there are a little procedural in nature and yeah. you're like well i don't really care about it but i want to know what happens with the dad how does the mom get with miguel uh what was the childhood really like at certain parts i don't like miguel i don't even like the mom i love that i you know each episode oh, I'm, I'm come on. and what's up. gonna happen now with kate is the gastric bypass gonna work, work. i'm very concerned about her is the boyfriend coming back because oh my god he's Toby's the best the best I just, yeah, it's so, so fantastic. Hi. You want me to take over? After oh, this? you got a computer? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. David was so kind. Um, all right. Oh, wait. Go Skip that one. I'll be right back. What just go happened? Are I you, gotta go grab one. Do Wendy. you have to poop? Uh, no. <laughs> what yeah, is. Sorry, sorry. All right. Um, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, season 12 trailer. I'm going to go ahead and guess that's a Josh thing because I didn't watch it. Dave, did you? I'm, I don't watch it. So this totally is amazing. Yeah, Josh so just glad leaves that the you show. Laughed. He just leaves the show. Okay. We got Wendy Lee coming on to talk real quick. The Gilmore Girls. Oh, yeah. Jump in. Hey, hey, girly. Wendy, what did you think of Gilmore Girls' year in the life that just debuted on Netflix? Oh, man. Um, as a fan, I'm a huge fan of the show. I own all seven seasons on DVD. And oh, thanks, David. <laughs> um, and while I loved all the... I don't even know which one's my camera. I'm just going to look at the wide. <laughs> all right. Uh, while I loved all the cameos and the quippy lines and all the fast talking and coffee coffee, I honestly thought it was a bit of a mess. I thought the pacing was a huge problem. I thought the character Rory was kind of written all over the place. She's not where I expected her to be coming off of season seven. And the best parts I felt like were the secondary characters was Michelle and Luke. And even the cameo, am I going to spoil anything? No, you can spoil. You okay. Can spoil, just put a spoiler alert. Because spoiler. Isn't there like a major, huge spoiler at the end of it? Yes, the last four words. Did everybody watch it? No. Already? I'm not going to. No. <laughs> it, it basically came full circle from the relationship with Lorelai, who you know, had a baby at 17 and she left Stars Hollow. And you have Rory, her daughter, who was everything she wished she was, or her parents wished she was, and you know, this Yale graduate, successful woman. And we leave the series, the last four words was, Mom, yeah, I'm pregnant. How old is she on the show? 32 on the show. So that's okay. 35 year old life. Fine. She's that's, living a life. Which is, which is fine. Like, yeah. I kind of saw it coming, and I was shocked because that's where they ended as such a cliffhanger. Like, what's going to happen now? We all know who the daddy is. But it's, it's a full circle thing because that's kind of what happened to her mom, even though her mom had her younger. So I saw it as a full circle thing and I actually didn't mind it. Although the first time I, I watched it, I screamed and I wanted to throw my laptop across what? the room. I was so mad. I was like, no, no Rory, no. Uh, no, you Rory, know. no. No Rory, no. No Rory, no. That's what it really ends here on TV Talk. No Rory, <laughs> no. no. It's here for Wendy Lee. <laughs> Wendy, thank you so much for being here. Yay. You're the best. Uh, so, Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Gilmore Girls is a high-ish for Wendy. We'll I give it. I haven't watched it. Uh, <laughs> it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Season twelve trailer. This, this show can't. It just gets better. It's this show's the best. You guys need to be watching this. It's that trailer. For the twelve such years. A high. It's still yeah, going it's strong. It's still going strong. Yeah. Just a Great. bunch of idiots hanging out at a bar. It's my dream. Okay, what's next? <laughs> um, and Rice wants Vampire Chronicles as a TV series. And not yeah. only that, she wants to do it with her son. Yeah. And they got she got the rights back from Vampire uh, Interview with Vampire. They thought they were going to turn that into a franchise. <clears throat> it's not. Anne Rice wants to turn this into a series that she wants to make the absolutely quintessential vampire series. I don't know. I'm going to go. Pfft. I'm kind of middle of the road. If they shoot it in New Orleans, I'm further yeah. up. Uh, if Nicolas Cage is part of it because he's a weirdo and him and Anne Rice have a thing, I'm all the way up. <laughs> but I'm just like right here. Right yeah, now. I'm not. I'm a little over vampired. David? I'm all the way up on this because Ooh. I love the books, um, especially if they get to book five. I think that's Memnock the Devil. It's fantastic. Okay. The Devil tries to talk to Lestat. Basically, he gives Lestat his viewpoint on the creation story, all from yeah. the Devil's perspective. It's that's cool. cool. That's a cool story. That'd be cool. Yeah. It's a cool Who story. would play Lestat, though? I feel like I'm so ingrained. We, Tom Cruise. Well, that's how I get <laughs> his age. Bring him back. Let's just keep casting <clears throat> Tyler Hecklin. No. Sure. And every yeah, Hecklin. Yeah, Hecklin. I'd, yeah, I'd watch Hecklin. <laughs> no, Superman. We we keep recommending him forever. We're just like either Hecklin or Bomer. Just put those dudes in it. Bomer would be good. Or Idris Elba. 
or Idris Elba. Ooh, yeah, that's always my answer. Okay, Sinead, what's next? Shameless. <clears throat> yeah, this season is very up and down, but this last episode and the last couple have been here. I just want Lip to get a win. Hi for Shameless. Hmm. Lip, Lip is the uh, the really smart one. Yes. He's a smart one. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right. When We Rise. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys, did you see the trailer for this? So When We Rise is a mini series that uh, Lance, no, Dustin Lance Black, who wrote Milk, Milk. who won an Oscar hmm. for Milk, is doing, it's got Guy Pierce. oh, girl, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, that's my girl. Oh! The Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg. Episode. You missed it, Sinead, earlier we were yeah. talking about Whoopi. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi like Goldberg, uh... Wait, there's so many other people that, whose names I'm totally blanking on right now. But it's basically about the LGBT uh, civil oh, rights that. movement. And I watched the, the trailer for oh that. Oh my God, incredible. the trailer, yeah. like I'm watching the trailer and I'm like yeah. welling up just watching the trailer. It looks so beautiful. And I feel like in these Trumpian times, something that we really need to see on an ABC. Mm. So it reaches a mass audience. I am very excited for it. And Huge high. And also he's uh, Dustin Lance genuinely Black. genuinely not biased. No. Yeah. Uh, Dustin Lance Black is reteaming with Gus Van Sant who directed at least two of the episodes and they of course did milk together. Yeah. So I can't yeah. wait. Okay. What's next, Sinead? Leah Ramini is Scientology miniseries. Um, uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm kind of afraid to say how excited I am to watch this because I don't want them coming to my house. No. Is this what network it's going to be on? It's on A&E. A&E. Oh, sure. Yeah, and it starts I think next week. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I love anything about Scientology. Me too. It's so it freaking up. fascinating. It's, it it's unbelievable. Ooh, can we, <clears throat> excuse me, can we add to this? Highs? I'm just going to add one. Go. Uh, Vikings premieres this week on Wednesday. Yes. It's a two-hour premiere. Looked at my DVR. I saw two episodes. I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can't That's wait. Me. That's me charging down with axes. Can't awesome. wait for Vikings. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. My beard is getting quite Viking-esque. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. No, not even close. You're like but Ragnar. <laughs> My mini Ragnar. Okay, what's next, Sinead? Lynn Manuel Miranda doing Drunk History. Yeah, that oh. was a solid. Yeah. yeah come Man. on. This guy is everywhere, and I really don't care. It's like, the best. He, yeah, the best. Him, yeah, put him in everything. So good. All right. First Riverdale teaser. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! A lot of, a lot of abs in that. Go. A lot of abs. When a lot they, of, when lot they of hot young people. From the network that brought you this and Gossip Girl, I was like, Sinead and like, Sasha ah, just lost yeah, their Yeah, I got it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. I love that it was just like, there's no reason for that dude to be pulling up nope. or down his shirt <laughs> no. in that one moment, but he no. like didn't have any water for a week and he was super, just got up. <laughs> I'm like, this show it, looks so ridiculous. It reminds me. waiting for Riverdale too. We've been talking about it for so forever. long. Like one of our very first TV talk episodes we talked Looks about like it's because between... of all of the superhero stuff there wasn't any room on the network until January Twin Peaks Dawson's Creek and I know it did last summer which is heaven yeah it sounds pretty sweet I can't wait okay last one Sinead Food Network will reboot Iron Chef America franchise. Yeah, done oh and done. Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. Everything about it. Ale yeah. That's right. <laughs> empty heart and an open stomach. Shoot. Let's right. do this thing. My dream is that one day they're like, hey, would the TV talk crew like to come and be judges of Iron Chef America? Oh my I'm God. Like, I what? Die. I would die. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no nuts or seeds, but I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> that, dude. Uh, that I have an allergy restriction. I will have it on the Food Network. And believe me, I'm making calls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sinead. And thank you for make. I know it was tough to get here, so thank you for being it's here. Right, and guys. thanks for wearing uh, that awesome we, sweatshirt. Yeah, it's and been a day. It's been a day. I'm so thank sorry you you're never going to wear it again because I'm ripping it off of your body, which all of all you can bring. Scarf fluff. Gimme. So uh, this week, this weekend, actually, we lost uh, a member of the TV community in Florence Henderson, who most famously played the mom on the Brady Bunch. Uh, she was awesome. And I have a, a personal story of with Florence Henderson. When I was eight years old, my family went to Disney World, and she was the Grand Marshal of the parade oh, in awesome. Disney World. Aww. And we got in the hotel elevator, and there she was. And my mom was like, hey, say something to Mrs. Brady. And I went, I really like you. <laughs> she was like, oh, thank you. And then just, and then she got off the elevator. That was my moment with Florence Henderson. I know for people that are a little bit younger, you guys don't know the Brady Bunch as well, but if you get a chance and you want to go watch some old Brady Bunch episodes, uh, please do, because Florence Henderson was just one of the best moms in history, totally. which brings us to this Twitter question, which is why I wanted to do this. Uh, with Florence Henderson passing, uh, name some of your favorite TV moms. Uh, I'll start with you, Sasha. Well, Florence Henderson for sure was up there. I mean, yeah. I... I didn't get in an elevator with her, but I was <laughs> in love with the dude in high school who looked like Florence Henderson. No, like oh. Greg Brady, <laughs> but with Ben Affleck's teeth before he got them fixed for Armageddon. Uh. And his name was also Greg. So I used to like watch the Brady Bunch and like wish that he liked me back. Ah, oh, never did. Greg Landis broke my heart. But Damn you, Greg best Landis. TV moms 
Mrs. Brady for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, come on. When I think of Felicia Rashad on the Cosby show, yeah. she will always mm-hmm. be one of the ultimates. Marge Simpson, she puts up with like such a, you know, Schmeckelheiner and yet raises some great kids. I mean, those are those are some of my faves. Yeah. David Griff? Um I forgot the mom's name, the Waltons. Oh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Walton. Mrs. Walton, of course, yeah. Uh, the Waltons, you know, good night, you know, Jim Boy and Jim Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I just watch that with my mom all the time. Um, Carmela Soprano. Oh, yeah. You know, she held as best she could. That's a that's a rough family to be around. Yeah, yeah Carmela did a great job. I um, love the, the one episode when she's she it's in season one and they're pulling all of the money and the machine guns from the roof of that from like yeah. the, the ceiling tiles. And she looks at Tony, and she goes, when are we going to stop doing this? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah she's a hell of a mom. Uh, Shanasty. Um, Lois Griffin, yeah, because she's neurotic and psychotic, <laughs> and I love every every single time she's on on the screen. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, and then we had this question a couple weeks ago. We asked like, like most effed up families, or like who was the most the effed up family? Thanksgiving episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, I said the the Vanderwoodsens, and that's because of um, Mama Mrs. Man. Vanderwoodsen. Oh, she yeah. is like so crazy and corrupt and she's like a criminal for like half of the show but she loves her kids so much but she's so obsessed with like being the cool mom yeah and (laughs) she's the best evil the the, you know uh, obviously florence henderson uh in in brady bunch i always had a thing for jill taylor on home improvement what (laughs) yeah the mom oh i know improvement patricia heaton yeah patricia heaton uh big fan uh obviously uh you know uh (laughs) meredith Meredith baxter bernie of course obviously loved lucille bluth in arrested development she might be the most insane mom but the mother boy uh episode was incredible there's, there are a lot of incredible uh, TV moms out there. Obviously, a throwback to June Cleaver because my mom, all my friends call my mom June Cleaver. Uh, yeah. Um, also, the mom. Wait, does um, that make you the beef? The beef. Yeah. That's 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 hilarious. <laughs> oh, the mom on uh, Boy Meets World too. I loved her. Oh yeah, she was a great. She was mom. so loving. Yeah. You know who was not a mom but was a, a single parent, and this was back before anybody did that. Was uh, on the Andy Griffith Show. He was a single dad. He yeah. was like a single dad raising little young Ron Howard, and he was an awesome <laughs> Obi, parent. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, our condolences out to Florence Henderson's family and friends and to us at TV Talk. We loved everything you did, especially in the Brady Bunch. So thank you. Uh, let's go to Twitter. Twi- tw- uh, Twitter questions? Twitter questions. Uh, hashtag a Clatter TV Talk. I sent out one yesterday. You guys bombarded me. So I have enough Twitter questions last us until Christmas. So thank you very much. Mm. Let's start. Sinead. Uh, Carlos says, what show had the best chemistry amongst a cast? I think that we can pretty easily say friends. Yep. Oh, I thought you were going to say us. Yeah, friends, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. David well, Griff. Nothing. Uh, other shows besides Friends, which is definitely at the top of my list, uh, I would say <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Sark. Oh, shocker. <laughs> Battlestar Go down to That's Nabby. a good show. Go down to Nabby. Go ahead. Downtown oh, oh, oh. Abbey. Yeah. Full Dark. Pole Dark. Dark. Awesome chemistry. Yeah, Pole Dark. I I, I, as much as I love Pole Dark, I wouldn't put it like in my top three favorite casts uh, of all time. Oh, I don't know about go. that. Pole Dark is go. good, but I wouldn't put it that high. Okay. Downton Abbey, Battlestar Galactica, Sopranos, Breaking Bad. How are you not going to put in Outlander? That but, chemistry between those two is yeah, fire. They are. But I'm thinking more on ensemb- Mad Men. I'm thinking okay. more like ensemble. So Mad Men. Scale. Yeah, grander scale. Band of yeah. Brothers on HBO. Yeah. Oh even though it was gosh, a miniseries, yeah, those guys that's had that's incredible. That's one of my favorite shows of all time. And even yeah. though like Entourage, not a lot of people like loved uh, Entourage. Um, I they, really they liked, were good together though. I loved together. them together. Like the best scenes of that whole show was when they were all together. Not one of those people can carry a show no. by themselves, but together that show was pretty yeah. great. See, for me, I would say like Breaking Bad, I think had incredible chemistry because even the people who had like weird strife, like when I think about like the relationship that Hank had with, um, I'm just calling him Brian Cranston. Uh, what was his name on the show? Walter White. Walter White. Oh my God. Like that relationship, even though it was so was complex cooked. and funky, mm-hmm. was so interesting. I loved the chemistry between him and Aaron Paul, but I got to go True Blood, man. Whoa, I thought True Blood TV. had crazy good chemistry. And every single person, like whether it was like a small moment with Lafayette in like the restaurant or whether it was like a whole crazy love triangle, like everybody on that show was just so great and worked so well together. Those first two seasons were really good. I yeah. enjoyed the first two seasons. Too. Okay. Should What's next? Uh, Bananas Foster says, hey, what TV show has the best production design? I'm a huge fan of Downton Abbey. So oh, thanks. Bananas Foster, thank you for your question. Thank you for that. 
Um, off of downtown, let's just stay over there in that uh, lovely island over there. Um, I'm going to go with The Crown. It's oh, yeah. Netflix's it, most expensive show they've ever done. You can see where that money is going. Have you watched that yet, Sasha? Nope. You need to watch that, Joe. Yeah, you're going to like it. It's good. <sighs> <laughs> just, 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 just take the journey with me. Just, let's, let's go across the I pond together. I'm just take it with me. Kind of busy. I know you're busy. I'm you didn't even watch. Yeah. You didn't even watch the pilot of the Crown. No. Oh yeah, you should. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should watch the Crown. You'll really like it. Obviously, God, I mean, this is like an after school special. Everyone's yeah. doing it back a. Everyone's uh, doing it. Just do it back a. I mean, okay, obviously, like Game of Thrones, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's. You know uh, what had crazy good production design? Black Sails. Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Dude, whoa. Boardwalk Empire. The costuming that, alone. The costuming, Ooh, the, the lighting, but like everything. Boardwalk Empire was so yeah. good. It was like yeah. seven and a half million per episode or something. It was a really high number. It yeah. was their most expensive before yeah. Um, yeah. Game of Thrones. But GOT for okay, sure. Okay, let's do one more Twitter question. Shana asked. All right. Mr. Me Seeks says, yeah. what are some <laughs> shows that you've freed yourself from watching? I dropped all the CW superhero shows. Damn. Well, you should pick those up because they're great. <laughs> uh, I I'm going to say I freed myself most recently from uh, House of Lies on Showtime. Oh, good for you. I feel like that show ran its course, and uh, I'm over it. Good so, for you. No, thanks. Uh, I freed myself on this show uh, very publicly from The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I keep trying to free myself from The Walking Dead, but I keep coming back to it. It, it. it pulls me back in. Just, uh, just like The Godfather like 3, the, Godfather the worst three. of The Godfathers. Pulling. Yeah, that, that, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that. Oh no, I'm just saying. I, ah. Yeah, well, well. yeah, well, yeah. Sinead? <laughs> I pretty much like. I freed myself from so many shows that we all started watching. I freed myself from This Is Us. Oh, I know. You are I freed myself out. from all those procedurals. Designated Survivor. I watched like three yeah, episodes of. Dropped that yeah. one. Yeah. I don't know. It just like got to me. Like This Is Us is a show I think I'll watch again. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 not riveting enough for me compared to what's mm. going on. And you know what right show now. I freed myself from? Naked and Afraid. I used to watch <gasps> that show all the oh time. My God, and I it would became watch it for hours stressful. Yeah. I, I just got too much anxiety. Once they started going Naked and Afraid, Double XL or XL or whatever it was, I it couldn't handle it. I used to watch that show for like literally like seven hours oh, yeah. a day. I could I could not stop watching. Whoa. The day that I stopped was because I, I'm very afraid of snakes and there was a snake and it came right at the camera and I screamed and I jumped and the remote control was on my leg and it flew up and it hit me in the mouth and I cracked my tooth and I started crying. And my oh, husband no. was like, can't watch the show no anymore. No more. Naked Have you guys watched Naked and Afraid? It no. is really no. great. It is unreal. It's so Mostly because I'm afraid to be naked. Uh, the people so that are naked and they're afraid? Yeah. Is that what yeah. Just the oh. 21 days. No, I'm not telling you. It's going to be my pick of the week. The next uh, time I'm going to pick okay. of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, though I freed myself from it, I might have just gotten sucked back in. <laughs> Thank you all for your Twitter <laughs> questions. Uh, as always, hashtag at Collider TV. We really appreciate you guys watching the show. So uh, it comes down to that time of the show. Everybody's favorite moment. It's the... Echo of the week! Woo! Wow. Uh, it's my choice this week. I'm choosing Outsiders on WGN America. Now, somebody, somebody, <laughs> hold on. Somebody recommended this to me, and I was like, that's got to be silly. But Opie from Sons of Anarchy is, uh, is in it, and funny. David Morse is in it. And it's, it's, it takes place, it's about the hill people of Kentucky. <laughs> I'm people. telling you, it is actually a really, really well done show. You guys think, oh, WG in America, they just play Cubs games. Nope, they play Outsiders. It's sort of like Sons of Anarchy meets a little bit of, uh, it's like, it's modern day meets old time. It's so, it's really kind of hard to explain. But imagine, imagine <laughs> these hick people of the Appalachian Mountains. They've been living there forever and they have their own language and they have their own people and all this stuff, but they live in modern day America. And up or no, it's real. It's real. Like <laughs> if you go to the Appalachians of West Virginia, Kentucky, these people exist. They speak a different language. No, they speak English, but they have their <laughs> old language, and they and they the, the town where they where they have this mountain. All the people know who they are, and they're scared of them. But this coal company comes in, and they want to take the mountain because it has a coal seam in it, and the people aren't giving it up that easily. This is Josh's pulled up. Nope, no, I'm telling you, Outsiders and WGN America. You guys got to check it well, out. Well, also if this show sucks, like Friends comes on WGN all the time. I know because I'm from Chicago. It doesn't suck, so. y'all. Wait, it's question, good. question. Go. I saw the pilot. It looks sort of like Revolution meets The Walking Dead. I love if you have no idea what you're dealing with, <laughs> you don't. You the don't. Hill. Yeah. Is pick it the hills have eyes? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's creepy. It's good. I'm telling you guys, well, give it a chance. Like All genuine, the episodes are on Hulu. Is it yes. if it's authentic to like it's authentic. actual real people yeah. living there? I'm telling you, okay. I lived in Pittsburgh and outside of Pittsburgh <laughs> in West Virginia, in the mountains of West Virginia, Kentucky, in the mountains, there are people that live up there. There are people that have clans. They are modern day pioneers of weirdness. 
Oh, you made me not. <laughs> oh, man. I love you guys so much. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That'll do it for us here on TV Talk. They are modern day pioneers of weirdness, <laughs> and so are we. Yes, Thanks for watching. Us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Before we go, where can the good people find you on the internet? Sinead oh, DeFries. I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that so Sinead.com here on Mondays hosting TV Talk, on Fridays hosting <laughs> Movie Talk, and over the weekend hosting Mailback. I apologize for my tardiness. I'm really sorry, you guys. It's okay, Sinead. Forgiven. We love you. You just give me that sweatshirt, David. 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 Given. Find me right here every Monday, of course, on Clara TV Talk, as well as on Saturdays, Star Wars Rebels. We're reviewing that every week with uh, Christian Harloff. Uh, Ken uh, Napsok pops in every now and then, and also John Campia. I was on Heroes last week, so watch uh, last week's episode of Heroes uh, with John Schnapp and uh, Robert Meyer Burnett. He's oh, out I there. Love them. Yeah. Well, let's be honest, Good David news. is part of the 3%. If they were picking people, David would get it. Yeah. He's I'm going to write down my. I don't think he wants to be part of the three percent, but you don't want to be in the three. Oh, three percent. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen the island yet. I haven't seen this episode yeah, two. I don't know yeah. what the island looks like. Right. Might not be a place I want to go. Theories, Sasha. You can send me all of your theories at Sasha Pearl Raver on Twitter and Instagram. I love talking about this stuff. I had to take a small Twitter break because some stuff happened in the real world and it just freaked me out. But I'm back, so please, She's please, back. please hit me up. We can talk ad nauseum about this stuff because I want to know what you guys think going into next week's episode. I'm always here on Monday with TV Talk and hosting FX Movie Download every Friday and a lot of Saturdays and Sundays at 8 o'clock on FX. There you go. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. I'm here on Monday talking TV. I'm all kinds of other places, including my show, The Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Just uh, keep watching, and we're going to keep making amazing stuff right here on Collider. So as always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.